In our last episode, we built this oil rig, which is turning 1,200 crude oil and turning it into 1,120 fuel, as well as 200 plastic and 200 rubber per minute. Not bad. And this was only possible by finding the alternate recipe for heavy oil residue, which allows us to make a considerable amount of heavy oil residue and polymer resin for the recipes. But the problem is this can only run if we turn off all other factories in our base. And with this power plant at full capacity, there's only one thing left for us to do, and that's build another one. Yes, today, we're going to be building this. Also that I can get this factory on the go so that I can produce some plastic in order to produce the computers that we need so that we can get started with trains. But before we do that, we're going to need to unlock industrial manufacturing. So we need that plastic and rubber. Starting off, we're going to grab some resources. We're going to need a bit of everything but specifically we're going to need some tier three belts. We're going to need more rods, definitely more iron. We're going to need some copper sheets. Oh, well, that's a problem. Ah, there you are. And grab some more of these and connect this up later. And I'm also going to need some concrete. Okay, so now that we've got that, we've got enough to get started. But first, we need to find a spot to work on our power plant. When we're searching for a spot, we're going to need two things specifically, coal and water. I would choose this spot. However, we do know that for update eight, they're going to renovate this area. So I'm not so keen on working in this area just yet, which leaves us with a couple of other options. We have the Crater Lakes, which boasts lots of space and three pure coal nodes. The Northern forest which has three coal nodes that are pure and one that's normal but not so much space or water or the dune coast which boasts two impure one normal and one pure node of coal if i remember rightly and plenty of space but this is a little bit far out for us also i never knew that this little cave existed this is the first time i've noticed it and i've built loads of factories here so you can bet i'm going to have a quick look see um, okay, it's just a passageway through by the looks of it. Up to here. Nice. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess that... Ex oh! <laughs> okay, so I'm sure that's going to be changed for update 8. Maybe. So given those three options, it makes sense to me probably to go to the closest one, which is the Crater Lakes. Uh, yeah, this is definitely going to work for us. I'd love to do something artistic with this. Uh, I also want to do a comparison between update 8 uh, with Lumen and then update 7. And so it would be really cool to play about with some signs and lighting as well. The first thing that I'm going to do here is to build a curve just around the outer section of the lake. This is just going to follow the natural curves of the lake itself. And then we'll place the resources on this little concrete section where it will then eventually go to the power plants which will be located on the lake that is behind us or at the edge of the lake I should say. I'm pretty happy with the shape so far but I think we're going to have to raise this up further because we're going to hit a lot of the land. However it has occurred to me that we've got a problem. You see, we may have some nobelisk here, but this particular flower, no matter what we do, where we put this nobelisk, it's not going to move. So I think the only thing we can really do with this is maybe make specifically this part of the uh, area feature the build, like kind of be a, a nature feature within it. And maybe we'll try that with other parts as well. We'll, we'll see once we've done all of the foundations around this because it's going to be a pain otherwise. Two things. Firstly, you can see we did make this a feature. Uh, the stem is going down into the ground and we've, we've kind of played around with the concrete just so that it, it looks a little bit more natural. Uh, I still like to improve on that a little bit more. The other thing, I totally forgot to record. So I've already built one of the power plants. This particular power plant is going to be taking 240 coal per minute and I think it's uh, 720 water per minute as well. 
Uh, so we're going to do three of these. I want to try and house these inside a build and then add some, at least some signs to it to see how the luminescence works with Unreal Engine 5 when we get it. I am going to cover all of this in, but first we need to obviously connect all of these up. I know we're clipping through the wall, the, the glass. I know some people aren't happy with that, but it, it's kind of artistic clipping in my opinion. It's something that we could do in real life, uh, not clip through glass, but we could, you know, place the glass around the, the pipe. Then we're going to fill this section as well and do it the same on this side. And then in the center, we're going to have a manifold that's feeding all of these. I'm also not sure about the color. We might keep the color for the power plant or we might change it to something else. Or maybe we'll, we'll color code them depending on which power plant it is. The water is going to come from down here. I haven't worked that bit yet. Either we're going to do it around this section or we're going to run it along here. And here we have the manifold ready. We need to do a couple more of the power plants now and then we need to start enclosing them. I think the next one that we're going to do is going to be just to the left of that one. I do not know about the third one. Perhaps we'll place it over in this section here, but I don't really want to get rid of the trees or over in that section there. But. I don't know, it'll be a bit tight next to the coal. Another thing that I wanted to quickly mention was that we're also going to do a little nature spot here as well. So I'm continuing this little curve around here and I well, maybe thinking about it, perhaps we can get rid of this. Yeah, I like the idea of having this on show and then perhaps we can... Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I might need to do some kind of decoration around this. We could bring this all the way around and then have maybe our power plant here. So we have this just breaking up the two power plants. And then I'd like to do something underneath but I'm not sure if we have space, it's a bit tight. And here we are, we followed the same process as we did for the first one and obviously got that eye lit for the nature, but we've still got a long way to go. I'm currently working on the back end of this system. I need to change this to concrete and I think what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna replace each of these fans, uh, fans, barriers, sorry. Um, to give it this kind of fanned look. And we'll even play with maybe adding some signs. We'll add the signs on the back section and then maybe give them some kind of luminosity. Again, for update eight, we want to try and play around with Lumen a little bit, if my PC can handle it, that is. So the next thing that I want to do is start working on the decor on the inside. And I was thinking maybe having something like this along the center part to make it look like it's supported. Yeah, if we do it along, if we, if we rotate it slightly, is that right? Perfect. I'm liking this idea. We'll put some signs on the inside just so that we have some light coming down and reflecting off the uh, glass here, but also the coal um, power plants once it's housed. The next thing that we need to do is to start bringing the water up. How am I going to do this? I think it's going to be a case of maybe placing walls and then adding the pipes or pipe holes to it. And then doing the same with this one. In fact, we could probably extend this because we have more space on this one. So if we bring this across like so, bring that across like so, and we'll be able to see this as we walk into the power plant. Oh, and before I forget, I've also added the signs to the back of this. I ended up making it a blueprint. If you're interested in using it, it will be available on Patreon. But it is so easy to do. It's just signs along the back edge, and then we have the slopes going into it. And we've just placed those sloped walls by using the barrier trick, which you just saw me use. 
um, by holding control with the wall over the barrier, you're able to place it. Next, I want to focus on the walls a little bit. Knowing that the lumen is going to make the inside of factories look very dark, we're going to want to use the glass walls as much as possible to bring in as much light as possible. But I also want to play about with shadows and the amount of light that we're letting in. So we're also going to do a little border above and then we'll probably cover a lot of this in so that we're going to be using the light that comes from the window specifically and maybe some signs and lights on the inside. I'm pretty happy with how the wall looks here now that we've completed one of the, the boxes. Uh, the idea is that we do make it look quite nice. Also, if you're wondering what that is, it's a temporary uh, constructor set up specifically for silica for the glass because uh, I had none available. Uh, I think we're going to place the other power plant all the way over there. I know it's a bit odd given that we have two over here, but I think it just it works quite well in opposition. Obviously, it's just going to be a the same replica as this power plant. So I won't worry too much about watching that. We'll just skip ahead. Oh, and I believe I forgot to mention the other thing as well, which is just this little section here. We've added some asphalt just on the top to break up from the, the light concrete. And we have the entrance for the pipes on this side, as well as a skiing tick by the looks of it. <laughs> So I think we'll have to do the water in a moment as well. And there you are. You can see we've placed the third power plant now. And we've also got the input of the coal running just along the uh, concrete border there. I think it looks all right personally, although it does need some kind of border around it. And I should also mention that we've added little outlets for the water to get from one lake to the waterfalls, just for a, a little bit of a, a sense of realism there. But now it's time to do the detailing. And we're gonna spend a bit of time on this. And there are two things that I need to bear in mind with this. The first is it needs to look cool. <laughs> we're going for cool points here but it also needs to be relatively easy to repeat as well. So we're going to start off by placing the asphalt on the front section here. We'll run this all the way along, same with this one here, because that would allow us to run maybe a walkway. I mean, we'll just temporarily place this here. We'll probably change this slightly. Maybe we can have a glass roof as well. So if we place this along here, I'd want this to be probably a gray stripe. By the way, if you're wondering how to get the glass roof, I've heard a few people asking about this. You can unlock it in the awesome shop, but for some reason uh, it doesn't display, or at least it didn't, it does now. It never used to display. Maybe we'll do like a glass window across that. Oh, you know what we need, thinking about it. Do we still have that blueprint that we made? The slotted root, yes. Oh yeah, this could look really cool. We get to see the effects of shadows. Maybe we can color it differently. I'm seeing this as white. I don't think we want to have white here, but maybe we could mimic the same color as the manifold below, the bright yellow one. Do something with this. Maybe just, maybe just a stripe across would look better. Yeah, I quite like the stripe across, but maybe closer to here. And then we could have, oh, this is really like firing off all of those little brain cells in my head. I, I'm going to play around with this a little bit more because I don't think we've got the perfect idea yet, but I'll show you once it's complete. And here we go. We've added a lot more detail. I've kept with the hexagonal windows, but we moved them in so they're cutting through the chimneys and use the chimneys as pillars for the, the roofing. We've also added a bit more height to it and kept the slotted roof there, uh, as well as adding some little strips of detail, but I'm really happy with how this looks. Let's go inside so I can show you about. As you can see, I wanted to play with the sign. So we've added just a couple on the inside. We may still add some lighting, but we have the green light there and then on the the side with the elevator, we've got a little light pointing to it. I'm just really interested to see how this compares with and without Lumen. By the way, if you're interested in seeing a comparison video, uh, do make sure to subscribe. We're going to be making sure to cover that when it's released. Also, we have a little way to get on top just at the back. 
and we can run inside through here. Oh, that didn't open for us. Perfectly normal. Oh, I just realized we haven't got enough water. I'm still doing the water. We've got a temporary setup at the moment, but you can see this is going to look fantastic at sunset and uh, also dawn. Just really liking what we've done here. The other thing that I should mention, that one worked, is if we jump over here, I played around with the angles again. So if we remove this just for a second, what we've done here is we've placed this, but we've also changed the angle like we did underneath. And I just love the, the mismatch with the different angles. So really happy with how this has uh, turned out. And here we have it. I know it's terrible. This is the temporary setup for the pipe. So I wasn't even bothered. I need to clean them up, make them much neater. And we need to overclock these. It'll only take me a few moments. And there we have it. You can see that looks a lot neater. We do have one water extractor, which I haven't actually done. And the reason for that is each of these extractors are fully overclocked to produce 300 water per minute and currently we only have Mark 1 pipes available. So once we get Mark 2 pipes available, we'll be adding some more water to the system so that it can all run efficiently because right now it won't. And of course, because I'm addicted to signs, I did add a load more around the side as well as partnering that with, oh, hello, a tick apparently. <laughs> Blummin' things. Uh, we've parted that with the normal walls and the iron girders. And I just think that's a really nice mix, which I haven't really done before. Currently, each of the miners is going to its own dedicated power plant. We're obviously not using all of the coal at the moment. The idea is that later on, when we have trains unlocked, we'll be able to ship the excess coal from here to somewhere else that needs it. But I'm super happy as to how all of this has turned out. Of course, with all three of these running, on and off at the moment, but they are running, there's only one thing left to do and that's to connect the oil rig with the network okay let's bring this up here we go that's a good sign and then this one and there we go all but that one over there is running fantastic let me just I probably forgot to add a recipe I knew it. And there you are. We are now producing the plastic and rubber that we need to unlock industrial manufacturing, which means we can start working on the heavy modular frames and the computers in the next one ready to unlock trains. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity Ben, Star, Shoku the Emin Wolf, and That Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.